uh, a little piece of Spurgeon to, to begin. If people are to be saved by a message, it must contain at least some measure of knowledge. There must be light as well as fire. So I pray that I have some light as well as fire this morning. Woo! Woohoo! Um, and let me actually let's just get on into it. So, and it's funny because Archie was talking to me about this before I even got out of bed this morning. Uh, was reading, she was reading the Old Testament, digging through Leviticus, and it's many, uh, uh, many, 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 many references to that which is unclean. Uh, although, not to one up Leviticus, but we have so many great words nowadays. And I really liked my yesterday entry, where maybe you could just sum all that up as people are scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> Leviticus 4, verse 1. Everything you do is the work of scumbags. Uh, chapter 5. Huh? What do you think? Huh? That's why I have not been asked to rewrite anything. Uh, or translate anything. Uh, these are some red letter words from uh, Mark seven eighteen. Are you thus without understanding also? That's right. Getting a little sarcastic again. Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him, because it does not enter his heart but his stomach, and it is eliminated, thus purifying all foods? Obviously, they they were coming at him because they were like, "You eat with when you don't wash your hands before you eat," uh, and that's against Leviticus law. That's against the ceremonial law, and actually, it was not really allowed in my house growing up either. Perhaps I should have dug into the Bible a little more carefully. Therefore, I could have lanced back at my mother with a, Oh yeah? What would Jesus do? Jesus didn't wash his hands before he ate. So children out there, if you're watching this, Mark, use it. It's, it's good stuff. No! <laughs> and he said, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Now, he also said that he came to dwell within and to not only just teach uh, teach verbally which he did in many a ways many a parable and so forth um, but then when he left he would he would leave a help me I wonder if I can find that while I'm talking about it um, and that he would leave the, the basically the Holy Spirit would then dwell and enable us to actually to achieve and to follow this sort of new law that he came or, or clarification of the law and sort of new covenant he came to establish which was a passing away of many of these ceremonial things that they'd held on for a long time. But those things came from God. And so the strangeness is, well, what do you mean they're going away? Because God said them. So these are the sacred commands of God. How would I then push them away? And uh, Christ said, well, really, I'm just asking you to really understand them to consecrate all things of yourself to he who created you. And just saying that in a way, by in and of ourselves, is just as impossible as us in and of ourselves following all the commands of the various and sundry ceremonial laws. But it is not impossible through the grace and the sacrifice of, of what Christ was to die for. So it's funny, even as he was talking about it, he was actually talking already a little bit in God speak. And just what I mean by God speak and that, in the way that I say that right then, <laughs> right then, uh, is, well, it's quite connected to then, uh, actually, and, and now and later. Um, in that the creator of the universe, uh, we are already quite aware, as just in our tiny little scientific minds, of how time exists and does not exist, and and, uh, and the awareness of that we are stuck in some way on a very 
like limited line like version of what time is and I just do not believe and I've seen much evidence to suggest so that that God's time is not that it doesn't exist like this the creator of the universe of all this for gosh sakes I assume would have no problems being then now and in the future all at once so it's funny because Christ is actually speaking about something that he was actually coming to enable and the people he spoke to didn't know that. I mean, honestly, they were used to still following just like following a bunch of rules. So here's some new rules. Or here's clarification of why these rules were. And then I think even the reason he was, uh, he let us uh, human beings uh, try to corner him and say, hey, what, what is the greatest commandment then of all these rules? And he wouldn't, well, of course, he didn't just say one. Totally like one of those, hey, what's your favorite record ever? And somebody names, start, names like five records, you know? But he named two, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he also clarified elsewhere, neighbor just doesn't mean person who lives next to you, or your best friend, or your mom, or your dad, it means everybody, your enemies, everyone from your friends to your enemies, love them as yourself. So have as much love, as much giving, as much effort, as much, like just live in that for a second. Holy cow, how hard are those two? Somehow the first one seems easier, but so when you, until you start looking at the all, with all of this, all of this, all of this. Man, I sometimes have trouble praying for five minutes without being, shoot, five minutes, for a minute and a half without being distracted by some random thought. So that lets you know how, how, uh, how still human I am. And that's the human part of me, man. Which is which is all which is that fall short of the glory of God, so I just live in gratitude, and I just have to keep speaking about it, and I have to keep checking it out again every morning because it makes me so joyous to know that I've been given a help me, and someone came, and spoke such beauty, just such beauty, and such truth and such, without without in any way being wishy washy, without that like he never sort of trailed off into, or then what. You know, I don't know. It's all just very, it's all quite complete and it answers a great many questions about our nature and, and then sacrificed himself in love for the wretched, which is all of us. Although some, I think some of us don't acknowledge that, but, um, that's kind of the first tip. And that's why I think he came to the broken because the broken were quite aware of who they were. And then the people who have found uh, coping mechanisms strong enough to ignore their brokenness, that that's gonna take a little longer anyway so I just wanted to relish in that truth this morning and just be with that truth and share that truth and and just share his love and I hope there was some light in there as well as fire I just hope there was fire in, in there too that he came to deliver us from death not only in this plane in, in our day-to-day -day existence but he said he would come he, he was leaving a, a, a help me and a, and a way of interacting with God that had never been uh, so readily accessible before but that he would return again himself and then at that time that's the, that's the end of days that's the the apocalypse that's the that's the uh, the revelations tale that all holy holy books have that eventually things will all burn out and even science is telling us now that uh, we're heading there we're bringing ourselves there, maybe at a faster rate than uh, than even this natural land was bringing us there. Uh, but anyway, at some point he will return, and the and the love uh, and judge, and that's the day of judgment. And at some point we will be called to reckoning. And I want certainly to avoid reckoning, but I also want my life here to be transformed. I want my life to be filled with love and with peace, and with truth, and with honor. Um, yes. So, I just thank the Lord for that this morning. And happy Monday.